Surah Al-Mulk, verse 30. Anyone memorize that? Last verse in Surah Al-Mulk. قُلْ أَرَأَيْتُمْ إِنْ أَصْبَحَ مَاءُكُمْ غَوَّا فَمَنْ يَأْتِيكُمْ بِمَا إِمْمُهِمْ This verse is saying, say, if your wells dry, if you don't have water, have you experienced the drought? Alhamdulillah, you have rain throughout the year here in the Netherlands. Ask desert people who if they don't have rain for a while, they'll die. Their crops will die. Their animals will die. Allah says, if your water dries up, who's going to bring you sweet water other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The application of this verse is that Imam al-Mahdi. The Imam of Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam taught us. If you don't have access to your Imam, if your Imam is in Ghaybah, who's going to bring you pure knowledge from Allah? Who's going to give you guidance? In other words, appreciate the Imams that you have. You know one reason why Imam al-Mahdi went into occultation in the first place? There are many reasons. One of them is a trial. One of them is to give us time to achieve completion for his government. But one of the reasons is every single Imam was killed and betrayed. Every single Imam. Even the followers of the Imam who claim to be the Shias of the Imam, many of them betrayed their Imams. Allah said, no, no, no. This last one, I'm going to say, enough is enough. Prophets, you kill them. Imams, you kill them. I will save this one for that era. When people appreciate the Imam of their time. And so Surah Al-Mulk, verse 30, reminds us of this reality. If Allah takes your Imam, you think you can figure things out? Look at the world today. You think we have things to figure out? Look at the wars happening. Look at the poverty. Look at the depression. Look at the corruption. Every single day, 30,000 kids die from starvation or malnutrition. Every day, every day. Not every year, every day. You do the math, times that three, by 365. You think we live in a peaceful, good world? Alhamdulillah, there are good people doing good things. But look at the world. It's becoming filled with injustice. Even rich nations and advanced nations. There's a lot of injustice that happens. There's a lot of corruption that happens. And so the believers come to know that truly the imam of their time is their only hope. We have to come to this realization. Let's appreciate the imams Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us, my dear brothers and sisters. Surah Hud, verse 86. That which remains with Allah is better for you. Baqiyatullah. That which remains with Allah. The ta'wil of this verse, as the imam tells us, when al-imam al-Mahdi will reappear, in Masjid al-Haram, in Mecca, he will make a global announcement. Oh people, I am the closest one to Adam, to Ibrahim, to Musa, to Isa, to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon them all. I am the closest one to them. And now it's time to establish justice. I invite you to come and join me. And then he says, I am Baqiyatullah. I am that which remains with Allah. Because Baqiyah is something that remains. I am the one who represents all these prophets. And I am with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so the hadith states every Muslim will come to him and they will greet him by saying, Assalamu alayka ya baqiyatullahi fi arda. Peace be upon you, oh, the baqiyah of Allah on this earth. Because Imam al Mahdi reminds you of Allah, reminds you of Prophet Muhammad, reminds you of Imam Ali, reminds you of the Imams of Ahl Bayt. Don't you wish you could see Imam Ali? Don't you wish you could see Imam Hussein? Well, what remained from all those prophets and Imams? Al-Imam al-Mahdi, he's their remainder. You look at them, you remember all those righteous prophets and imams before him. And so people will say, As-salamu alayka, ya baqiyyatallahi fi arda. This is another beautiful verse in the Quran about the Mahdi. 